My name is Gyan Manik. I'm a painter based in Nam, Melbourne, and I am interested in a dynamic investigation of representation in painting. My background is half Indian, half Dutch, and I think the really obvious artistic side comes through my mum and my granddad being painters. So I sort of started going to art classes when I was pretty young. My parents took me there after school and um, I sort of did it throughout primary and high school and then went to uni um, and did a fine arts degree, honours and then masters when I moved to Melbourne. After study, it was important to consider it like a job um, and kind of treating it professionally. So it is my work and I like to be good at it. So that's why I sort of want to exhibiting and yeah, that's important too. I use the umbrella of self-portraiture as something that sort of defines an ongoing investigation into painting. And then within that, there's lots of different types of I guess interests that fall under that, that I investigate, usually differently for each exhibition or project that I have coming up. I have a pretty diverse kind of interest in lots of different artists, not just painters, but also um, sculptors and video artists, sound artists, but also filmmakers and musicians kind of inspire work too, as well as critical theory and philosophy. I think it's something that I was sort of taught quite formally from a young age. I do have interests and I have sort of dabbled in other sort of media, but I think painting is something that I feel more confident in. Usually I'll come up with a concept for a show and that might be inspired by previous work that I've done and then think about maybe the amount of works, how large they are, and then what the overall concept is. So. It can be sort of pretty dynamic and quite different um, from painting to painting in terms of subject matter. I think it's sort of important to have a place that I can sort of have all that mess and stuff that I don't have to sort of take apart and put together um, every day. So it's nice having sort of like a dedicated zone that I can keep thoughts and ideas and also ongoing works. So we're going to do some um, pretty standard kind of colour theory, uh, mixing from primary colours and then I guess working on quite a fast wet on wet process. So building up pretty general layers to a point where you're kind of happy with an end product in relation to the source image. So we're using a severed head from a TV show, which is a special effects prop today. What I usually do is using sort of a pretty thin brush and quite a bit of the medium that we're using, which is turpentine, um, is to use one colour, usually like a blue, so you can sort of see it um, not so thick. And then um, just doing a really rough sketch. The idea is you're just going to cover the whole thing, so don't worry about putting any detail in. And try and get it down as fast as you can. So it's just getting like a tiny bit of pigment, kind of making it transparent, so it's not really going to mix other colours over the top of it. And you're just kind of getting the main parts that will dictate where and different colours you're going to put on the canvas. So pretty much that's it. To start off with, what we're going to do is just do like a general layer. Um, and then work from that. So almost like an abstract base, and then you kind of come up to whatever level of realism that you're comfortable with. What I generally do is have the source image and squint at it, and that gives you sort of like a, a basic version of what colors to make to begin with. So if I squint, um, I can sort of see this yellowy kind of main color um, on the light side, the light left side of the face, and then a darker one sort of where the shadows have been picked up, the background colour and then maybe some of this other dark kind of hair. Generally um, the colours that we've got here are white, 
a primary yellow, primary red and primary blue. So they're kind of technically the only colors you really need to mix and make every color. What we'll do is start with um, the lighter colors towards the, this white side and then make the other kind of colors along here. So we'll start with some white using a palette knife and you sort of push it to get most of the paint off and then add other colors to um, make this sort of yellowy skin tone. I guess what I do generally along the way is be pretty frugal with how much paint you're adding and then add more if it's like not the right one. So you get more confident on the way rather than mixing it all up and making a big mess. We'll start with this and you're sort of using the pressure of the palette knife to mix that color. And then what we do is picking it up, making sort of, I guess like a contained little blob of it. Um, and then what I usually do is use the back of the palette knife to test what color it is against the one that you're using. Pretty similar, it's a little bit muddy, so I'll add a bit of blue. Using tiny amounts of color, and then when you're a bit more confident with how much you need to add that to it, because they can change really quickly. But that's kind of probably maybe a little bit more blue, where you want to go. Also like, it's a good stage to make mistakes at as well, so you can sort of fix them when you're adding more color over on the next layer. So that's probably pretty good for that light area. And then try and get most of the pigment off. You can use a rag as well. And we'll go into the next color, which is a few tones darker. So white again, less this time. And then more of the primary. So you can sort of see that I'm just adding small amounts of that pure color, um, being pretty careful and then checking it every once in a while. Obviously like with normal color theory, you know that these make brown and then, you know, making it a bit warmer, you'd add more of the red, cooler makes, uh, use more of a blue, that kind of thing. So we're getting there, it needs to be a bit darker. So that's probably good enough for now. And then we'll move on to that really dark color. So probably starting with the blue now and then adding red and yellow. So you can make pretty dark tones with just those primary colors, which is cool. Um, Cause sometimes when you use black and then mixing stuff over the top of it, it can get pretty muddy and kind of comes out more gray rather than having other colors um, underneath it. So that's probably fine for now. And then we'll just do sort of the lighter background color. So the whole thing's filled. Kind of that for now. So what we'll do now is get a large brush with this sort of small canvas, something that size is probably good enough. What you do is just block in all these colors so the whole thing's full. So once again, I guess if you squint, you're sort of seeing which areas are obvious for the colors that you've mixed as well. So we'll just start, um, on the lighter ones first. Mm -hmm. 
and then you're kind of wiping some of that paint off and cleaning the brush a bit. And you start from light to dark because then it just doesn't make the brush so messy. And I'm kind of just doing like the bigger areas with this brush and then you can sort of use smaller brushes later on to do more detailed parts. So this is a good first kind of basic coverage. You can sort of register looking at the image um, by squinting again that some of the colors might not be right, but that's okay because we can change them with some more detail later. So we'll switch onto like a more medium sized brush and kind of bridge the gaps between these two colors so they're blended more like what's actually on the source image. And for this, what I might do is actually mix the two colors together to get like a medium of them. Um, and then those can be kind of connecting those two colors. So once again, sort of squinting back and forth. Um, it's also a good thing to say to have the source image really close to the painting. So you're not really losing information when you're kind of mixing the colors and then painting it. Um, but yeah, squinting again to sort of see those secondary colors um, and you've noticed as well like I try and tend to sort of not sketch away it's kind of more important to sort of see the shape and the stroke get the right brush and then just do it in one movement Maybe at this stage you can sort of think about having a bit more definition. Um, so like picking up on some of the main features like the eyeballs, I guess having a tonal sort of variation from really dark to light on the surface now is going to make you register how you need to fix these medium colours as well. So just by adding blue to that brown I'll get quite a um, colour close to quite dark or black. So now I'll move on to a smaller brush to do a bit more um, picking up on the detail again.
So it's kind of up to you with how much resolution you want with the finished product. I guess it's about looking and seeing what detail you want to kind of capture and then using the right brush for that. So working, you know, finer and finer. And then I guess, yeah, just mixing more and more colors. But I'm pretty happy with it at the moment in terms of like a quick wet on wet sort of tutorial.